My heart is beating to your drum And I'm blinded by the sunshine in your eyes Not thinking twice in my this done Although I know you're all I want How could I crave something so bad? My sweaty palms reveal a warning I should hear Maxine and welcome back to my channel. So we are all stuck in this crazy situation. Everybody's quarantined at home. I hope everybody's healthy and safe and it's just crazy that the whole world is going through this right now with this virus that's spreading and I just hope it stops soon. You know I hope we can all get back to normal soon and in the meantime I hope everybody's healthy and safe. I hope you're taking this time to just hang out and relax and, and I hope people are doing things that they wouldn't normally get a chance to do on a regular day so but yeah I just figured while I'm home in the meantime I might as well make a quarantine video <laughs> because I feel like a lot of people are doing those coming out with videos like my quarantine morning routine or what I've been doing every day type of thing and so I definitely wanted to come out with some kind of a video quarantine style you know what I mean and uh, I was brainstorming on ideas but my client actually reached out to me and gave me a really good suggestion so I'm going with her suggestion today so shout out to you Gigi thank you so much for that amazing suggestion yeah so today's video is going to be quarantine hairstyles that you can do to cover your really grown out roots <laughs> and I know that's a big issue for a lot of people who get their color done all the time and their roots are starting to look crazy so I'm gonna go through a couple of different hairstyles that I think are gonna help kind of like disguise your roots yeah like just hairstyles that you can wear on a day at home or whatever you know just hanging around your house just so that your roots don't look so bad yeah because I don't want anybody doing anything drastic and going home and like panic box coloring their hair please stay away from the box color you don't need box color in your life the salons will reopen soon you know what I mean like it's not closed forever. We will be back in the salons making you guys all pretty again. But in the meantime, at least, hopefully these hairstyles that I, I'm going to show in the video can help get you through this quarantine. I hope it helps a lot of people. So yeah, I'm just going to go through a bunch of different hairstyles that will disguise your roots. And if you want to see that, then definitely keep watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Like this video if you think this was a good idea. And follow me on Instagram. It's at Maxine Glynn. All right, so yeah, let's just get into the video. <laughs> okay, so with most of these hairstyles that I'm going to show, we are going to be taking full advantage of the headband braid. <laughs> so I'll show a couple of different ways on how to do the headband braid, but I think that's just gonna be the best option to hide the roots, you know, because a big fluffy braid over the top and front of your hair is just perfect. You can wear your hair down with the headband braid, you know, covering your roots. You can wear it to the side in a braid. You can wear it to the side in a ponytail. You can wear it up in a ponytail, high pony, messy bun, like however you wanna wear it, but like, the headband braid being there is just gonna disguise your roots. The other thing that I think is gonna be really important to hide your roots is zigzag parts. So yeah, wherever you part your hair, if your roots are really bad, if the part is a straight line, you're gonna see the straight line more or you're gonna see you know, any overgrown root a lot more. So to make the part zigzag, it's really just gonna like create dimension in that spot to help basically zigzag your color. Instead of your color sitting in a straight line, it'll sit in a little bit more of a zigzag. So that will like help diffuse the line, you know? So I'll show you how to do that. So definitely if you have a tail comb, find it, pull it out. This is your savior. But also if you don't have a tail comb, honestly, anything that's like straight, you know, and sharp kind of like literally anything that you have that's small, straight and sharp, that's like around your house, just use that, you know? But yeah, so the first thing that I'm going to show you is the headband braid. So this is the kind of braid that I wore for my sister's wedding. And I did my hair a bunch of times to try to find out which braid I liked the best on myself um, when it comes to like a headband braid. And because I have such long hair, I didn't do a French, I just took it, the hair from behind my ear and used that to braid and bring it over. So that's the way that I'm gonna do this first look. Just from right behind the ear, take like the nape portion, which is like the hairs near your neck, just pull out some hair right behind your ear and kind of just go right underneath. Don't go like fully to the other side, but maybe like halfway. You still wanna have like hair underneath here but you want to pull all of the hair that's on this side out and then just clip it up. This is the braid that I felt like worked best for me for when I wanted 
this for my sister's wedding and I had my friend do my hair and help put it together for me and she did such a good job. So I have such long hair, I could, I'm gonna braid this and fluff it all out and basically just bring it over the top of my head to make the headband braid. But if you don't have long hair like me, if you do have any extensions lying around, you can use the extensions for this. If you have hair short or if it's medium, whatever the length is, just part it by the root area and pop the extension in right at the root and like leave a little piece of hair out and put a little piece of extension there. You know, just put some extensions to add the length. But if you don't have any extensions around, um, just wait for the next headband braid because I'll show you guys how to do it on like shorter hair, which would be like more of a French type of a style where the braid is actually on your head. So just stay tuned for that next style. But this first one is for long hair or somebody who has extensions. So the braid I'm gonna do is a fishtail braid and I'm just gonna part my hair like this and take a little section from the outside and bring it to the next side. And then take a little section from this side and bring it to the next side. And keep the two strands going. A little bit from the outside, over to this side. A little bit from the outside, over to this side. And literally just keep doing that the whole way through. And I have a lot of hair, so um, this fishtail braids always take a lot longer on my hair. But I'm going to take like big sections. You could take big sections if you want, small sections, whatever. The smaller the section, the more detailed the little ridges in the braid. So I'm going to speed this part up just so that you don't have to sit here and watch me. Okay, so I'm gonna stop right here halfway through because I just find on really long hair especially you can fluff the braid out a lot better if you don't like continue the braid all the way down first so I'm just gonna stop and I'm, I still have the two sections going they're just like sitting loosely in my hand separately and now I'm just gonna fluff you don't want to fluff too too close to the root because it's gonna get kind of frizzy so just kind of keep it just past the root a little bit when you fluff it out. And switch hands. We're gonna like fluff more after, but this is like just getting this part at least loose, you know? Okay, so now I'm just gonna keep going with the braid. Just be gentle pulling it out. You just wanna pull like the outside, the outside of the piece and pull. So just pull like, pinch like the outside. Pull. This is the braid. Make sure it's nice and even. This is going to be your headband braid to camouflage those crazy ass roots. <laughs> Next, pull this clip out from behind you. So the first style that I'm gonna do is gonna be just with my hair down. So bring the braid up over and lay it like in the front to where it camouflages the roots. Okay, so figure out if you want to leave a little bit of hair down in the face. Take the braid, place it right in the front. Hold down with your finger right where your part is. And take a little bobby pin. And you want to tuck the bobby pin like right underneath the braid. Catch some of the hair in the braid first. Catch some of the hair in the braid. And then catch the hair that's on your head and that will help secure it a little bit to the, your head. Who cares about these pieces because we'll fix them in a second. Um, 
So now move the hair out of your face and bring this braid down around your ear. And another bobby pin. Now like the same thing, clip it, take some hair from the braid, pop it in the braid, and now make sure you're catching some of the hair on your head too. And this one you definitely want to secure a couple. And even if you crisscross the two bobby pins, that would make it even stronger. So you put one in this way and then you put in one, you know, crisscross the two bobby pins. Now you want to just make sure that it's not too far from your roots. Bring it close to wherever you feel like it's going to cover your roots best and fluff it out really good. So now you want to just take a couple more bobby pins and really secure these braids also and do the same thing. Go underneath of it, catch some of the hair and catch some of the hair on your head and just tuck the bobby pin in. And then sometimes these little stick up pieces are cute. Like it just adds some texture. So even just even if you just tug out around these sections to add a little bit of texture to kind of even out the texture, you know what I mean? So in, if you don't always want to tuck the texture in and hide it, you can leave it up, you know, it'll just make it look even beachier, messier, lived in, you know, it'll, it'll make it look a little fancier, but like something like that, you definitely want to tuck away. So just open up your bobby pin a little tiny bit and from be behind it, because that always like hides it better, catch some of the, catch the hair a little bit with the bobby pin, close the bobby pin, and then just pop it in the braid. And that helps disguise it a little bit. Sometimes you just gotta mess with it until you pull up the right pieces to make it look nice and round. Okay, so this is the headband braid on hair that's down. Little hair in the front always makes it a little bit look softer, you know? Um, and yeah, so this should really help disguise your roots if they're grown in pretty bad, you know? And if you wanna like keep this in too, just, you know, put a scarf over your head, sleep with a scarf on or something, you know? That way, it's even better on quarantine days. You don't have to keep doing your hair every day. You can just like wake up and have the same type of thing that covers your roots. But yeah, so this is what it looks like on hair that's down. Okay, and so from this style, you can switch it up too. So I'll just show you, I'm just gonna put it in a really quick side braid so just take all of the hairs that you have, bring it to one side, and separate it into three. I'm just gonna do a really quick braid, you know, just to show you. Separate it into three. You can keep it nice and loose too. If you keep it nice and loose and fluffy, it definitely always makes it look nice and soft. Don't tighten it too much. You know, at the end, just pull some of these pieces out. I'll show you a quick way to hide the elastic. So put it on your hair, make sure it's tight enough Keep the last piece open when before you actually officially close it. Put your thumb through it. Now take like a long piece of hair from the edge. Just make sure it's like skinny, a little tiny little piece of hair, and wrap it around the top of your thumb. So don't go like underneath your hand, go above it. And just wrap it around above your thumb. And now when you're ready to close it, grab with your other hand the strand and just pull it right through. Now with this piece, go opposite way and tuck it like behind itself. I'll just pull this hair over the band. You can also fluff out the rest of it just to make it hide, you know? So yeah. So that is this look with a side braid. can even keep the same headband braid in if you can find a way to not you know have it get frizzy and stuff while you sleep you can keep the same headband braid in and just switch up your style on this hair every day you know you can even do like something low like some kind of a bun you know you can do like something up really high like I'm gonna try to put this up really high right now just make sure you like try to find where the band of your braid is and take the hair that's kind of around it, the hair that's not tucked into the bobby pin, 
and keep that out until you put your hair up just so that you're not pulling on this part as you're combing and putting your hair up because you don't want to like ruin this headband part so keep that out just so you're not pulling it and bring all of your hair up you want to just bring this back forward tie this up I always like to pull the top part of this out to pop it up. And yeah, so this is what it would look like up in a ponytail. And then from this, you can turn this into a messy bun. So same exact headband braid. I'm doing like a million styles. Just take your ponytail and keep it like nice and soft as you twist it and twist it now onto itself and just keep twisting hold it keep twisting but if you keep it nice and loose it'll stay nice and fluffy like this so place it where you want it hold it and put one bobby pin in the front but underneath always put your bobby pins underneath you don't always have to open them either if you keep them closed, it'll still work. Just make sure you're grabbing a little bit of hair from underneath, but grab hair from the actual bun, and now grab hair at your head. And that will at least help keep it like nice and secure. Like this is the part that I wanna keep secure, so that when I bring this part up over around it, it doesn't give it like a weird bubble. Okay, that'll just help it keep it from popping up too much. Now, when you take this part, keep it twisted, but before you have totally pin it, loosen it a little bit. Not too much, you don't want it to totally fall out, you know? Just loosen it a little bit. And tuck it around the back. And pin it again. Give that one a couple of pins so that it stays in nice. If you don't have bobby pins, you can use a hair tie. You know, once you bring the bun up and around, you just put a big old hair tie around it, that would work. So yeah, put it up in a bun and fluff the bun out. Always, when you're fluffing it out, just less is more, you know? I'm gonna tuck that in a second. Less is more, that way you're not pulling too much out. Take a little piece and just pop it in. So yeah, this is a nice loose top knot, <laughs> messy bun. Uh, this you can literally probably sleep with and leave in for like days <laughs> if you don't want to shampoo your hair. And if you wear a scarf around this part, you know, like even if you lay in the back, even if it gets frizzy, you can hairspray. Hairspray, you know, smooth up, bobby pins, whatever to keep it kind of like not frizzy anymore. But yeah, this is what a messy bun top knot would look like with this style. I know it's hard to tell, but imagine if you had really bad roots, how much this would help covering the roots. Okay, so I just took all of my hair back down and the next thing I wanted to show you guys is a headband braid that's attached to your head. So like a French braid that goes all the way across and that's better probably for the people with shorter hair. I know it's hard to do your own hair anyway, so it, hopefully I'll be able to kind of just walk you through how you could go about just putting the French braid going this way on the top of your head. Basically, the first thing you want to do is figure out which direction you go with your hair. For me, I part on this side and I have all, like the most amount of my hair is going towards the left of my head. So figure out if you part this way or if you part that way. And that's gonna be the direction of the headband braid. Also, if you part your hair normally in the middle and you don't really know which direction to go, just I would say go with whatever hand you write with. So if you are a righty, go and part your hair and bring the amount of hair over to the right side. 
And if you're a lefty, go the other way. So I'm just gonna go basically wherever you part your hair. So you wanna make sure this braid is kind of, you know, on the thicker side so that it really hides all of these roots. I know, like I said on me, I don't have any roots, but if you can imagine like a dark root, straight line, and then like light hair, you know what I mean? Like this is the type of thing that's gonna really disguise it. So take a big braid, start in the start on the end, maybe about an inch and a half in, and put your finger back, put your finger back behind the back of your ear, behind your ear, that will help draw a straight line. And then just draw a straight line all the way down and go right to where your finger is. Now take the hair that's on the top of the comb and like separate it out. Make sure it's nice and even. If you don't have a big clip like that, just use like a hair tie, you know? So this is what that looks like. Okay. Now you want to do the exact same thing on the other side. So put your finger behind your ear. This just helps draw the straight line, you know? Take the tail comb or whatever type of thing you're using and do the same exact thing. Just to behind your ear. So now you're just combining the hair. And yeah, if you would rather put a hair tie here, then definitely do that. Anything would work. I'm just gonna twist it. Okay, so now going back to the direction that you're pushing your hair. So for me, I have less hair on this side. That means I'm swooping the hair over to this side of my head and just comb it the whole way through as you're swooping it over. You know, make sure it's nice and smooth. Even take your brush if you have a lot of hair. You want to get all the way down to your scalp when you're brushing it. You take hair, take a bit of hair from by the ear and section it out into three sections. Now cross it like a regular braid and now you want to add hair to the end. So you want to keep adding hair to the end pieces. Cross it. Now this becomes the end. So you want to add hair. Just swoop it and tuck it in between your fingers. That helps me keep track of it. Now grab it and swoop over. Cross. Scoop some, put it in between your fingers, grab it, and cross this part over. Take a pair, add it to the end, grab it, and cross. And this whole time, you want to make sure that you're keeping the braid as close to your hairline as possible and not like too far back. And push on your head really hard, push against your head. You have to keep your fingers pretty tight this whole time so that you don't lose the pieces of hair. Make sure it stays really tight and like push against your head the whole time.
grab it really hard, tighten it, and now cross those two. So now we're at the part of the head that you wanna, now instead of directing it forward, you wanna start directing it back. Because if you direct it back and keep it really tight on your head, you won't have any weird bubbling. Just tighten it really hard. Okay, and now get a good grip and hold it in your hand. I'm just gonna tuck that behind me. So this is the French braid. This is really tight. Sorry if I have any little dandruffies. That's just, you see it a lot because I have dark hair. So this is where we stopped the braid with keeping it tight, but not that tight because now I want to just fluff this out a little bit. And if you're holding it too, too tight, it won't fluff out. But this is what we call like pancaking a braid. I like to call it petaling, like adding little petals. Um, but pulling out the braid is going to make it look really pretty. and help disguise your roots even more. See, it adds pretty little petals. So when it comes to the sides, don't pancake it too much because uh, it starts to loosen up, you know, too much on that side. Yeah, so just kind of work on that for a second. I love how that ends up looking, you know, it's pretty. So when it comes to this part, you can either stop the braid here, right there, and just like pin it down, or you can follow it all the way back down. And that will be just like a little accent braid, you know, which is whatever style you end up wanting. Now I'm gonna do that trick where you hide the band. Just without fully closing it, keep it in your thumb. Take a little piece of hair and over the top of your thumb, you wanna just wrap it over the band. Just do it a bunch of times, you know? And now take and loop it through. Loop it through. Now follow it behind itself and just spread that over. And now the band is totally hidden. And just keep fluffing. Okay. So that's the pancake braid or the flower petal braid. I always think of flower petals with this type of a, when you pancake a French braid out like that. So that's the same exact concept as the other braid this one is just the type of braid that you don't really have to pin down to your head it's stuck on your head so now this is not going anywhere it's totally stuck on my head and you know use little body pins if you have any crazy pieces like this like if you have a random frizzy piece that ended up happening when you were pancaking it just you know give it a little bit of a just pin down little pieces you know and this is what it would look like down And this type of braid would stay even better than the last braid because this one's on your head. It's less frizzy because it's a different type of a braid.
So basically you can take this exact same braid and do all of the other styles that I showed you with the last headband braid and just apply it to this headband braid. And this one's even better, you know, if you can manage to figure out the French braid, this one's even better because look, like you can pull on it, it won't go anywhere. And when you put your hair up, you know, this will just swoop up. You won't have to worry about it as much getting messed up. Like it'll just swoop right up. You can be less gentle with this one. That's what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> the other one, you just have to be like a little more careful. This one, you can be less gentle. Yeah, so this is a really good one to do if you can manage the French braid. <laughs> and I just want to quickly, while it's parted this way, show you how to do a headband braid without having to know how to add pieces of hair to like the strands and stuff. Because I know that can sometimes get really confusing to follow along with if you don't usually, you know, know how to French braid your hair. So this is just like kind of um, like a life hack. <laughs> so basically swoop it over to the direction that you want and start off by pinching, maybe even spray it a little bit. This is the Matrix Style Fixer Spray. This one's a really good one. I love it because it's soft. It doesn't harden the hair that much. It just gives you like a nice soft hold. So pinch right where you want to start it and just twist. And now pinch the hair right behind that and twist. And pinch the hair and twist. Grab the hair right behind that. Make sure you're not grabbing too far back. Like grab only that section and twist. Grab that and twist. Okay. Now grab the same hair, like keep grabbing hair from behind it and twist. You just wanna keep grabbing all of this hair and push really close to your head the whole time you're twisting so that you're, like this is gonna be attached to your head, you know? I'm gonna push this out of the way because it's annoying. <laughs> okay, so I wanna purposely leave a little piece of hair out of this whole twist thing. Um, and that's gonna help secure it like to the head because it's gonna, if like if I let go of this, my point is if I let go of this, it's just gonna totally unravel. So, so now you wanna grab this hair and just add it to the twist, but don't twist it with it. Just add it to it. And then I need to grab two hair ties for this because one hair tie will definitely break with the amount of hair I have. And the way that I twisted it, it has a lot of tension. So the second I put the band around it and let go, it's gonna wanna unravel. So I need to <laughs> tie the band around it. At this point, you wanna keep this hand that is like close to your head really hard up against your head so that it doesn't unravel and then when you Pull the hair through, just twist it a little bit so you don't get rid of the tension before it's totally tightened, you know? Okay. Okay, so you see how it like totally just wanted to loosen up? But that's fine because that little piece of hair is gonna help keep it from not loosening up now that we're gonna tighten it down. So then split it in the middle and really gently, like close to the hair band, really gently so it doesn't get all frizzy start tightening it. Okay. And you see how it immediately made it so that it's not popped up anymore? And at this point, you can hide the band the same exact way that I taught you before. If you just, if you let go of it already, it's fine. Just lift up a little piece of it. Lift up one little band, part of it, and put your thumb in it and just do it do it the way that I said before, you know? And yeah, so this is kind of like a life hack on how to do French style braid, but without actually having to braid with different strands and add hair to each strand and all that stuff, because I know it can get crazy confusing. So yeah, this is just a way to do it to where you don't have to do that. Yeah, so if you have like bad roots and you're not exactly sure how to do a French braid and you're also don't really have like the extensions to add into that other piece of hair to make it long enough to swoop over. This is like a good way to do it.
Okay, so yeah, those are all of my versions of the headband braid and how you can have that work for you and the type of hair that you have. So I hope that works for you. And the next style I wanted to show was a simple style if you wanted to wear like a part in your hair. How can you disguise your roots if you wanted to wear a part? This is my suggestion. The tail comb, again, or any type of any type of strong, like pointy thing, the zigzag part is like gonna save your life when it comes to grown out roots. So even if you want to wear your hair down with a zigzag part or up in a ponytail with a zigzag part or in a braid, like if you want to just zigzag part, side braid, easy, you know what I mean? Like just know how to do the zigzag part and that's gonna like save your life. <laughs> okay, so you can do a really small zigzag part or you can do a bigger zigzag part. So it just depends on like you and your hair, your preference, how like crazy your roots look. If they don't look that bad, if they're only a little bit of roots, maybe a smaller zigzag part would work best. But if you have like a significant amount of roots and the line is pretty far down of regrowth, then maybe a bigger part would work better because then when you separate it back around and reveal the zigzag, the pieces that were on this side are gonna now be on this side and it's gonna really break up that line and like diffuse and diffuse the line of demarcation as we call it <laughs> in the hair world. I'll show you guys how to do a small one first and then a big one. So a small zigzag park, you just start. I never start on the side that has more hair. I always start on the side that has less hair because I just find that it comes out a little bit better. Like framing your face, it comes out better. So zigzag, just literally hold the comb or whatever you're using really strong onto the scalp. Like you actually wanna feel the comb draw the line on the scalp. So you don't wanna be like light, you don't wanna be really light handed about it. You really, and you don't wanna like sit on this top surface of the hair. You really wanna draw this on your scalp. On the head and just draw right where the part is, back and forth, back and forth and just keep it really small, you know? And this is like, now that there's more hair added, you just want to keep it really strong under the head. And now after you have finished, you only want to go as far back as like this back part of your head. You don't want to go too far, obviously, unless you're going all the way down the back of the head, you know, for like two braid type of situation. That's different. But so now end it. You want to bring the braid out. I mean, bring the comb out now, like end it. And now take it with your fingers separate away like both sides of this hair keep the comb here though so you're not confusing like which side was supposed to be which side so that's where it looks like find like that middle part you know and now bring it across and you're gonna look crazy <laughs> at first until you comb all of this down like you're gonna look electrocuted <laughs> comb everything down and this is what it looks like with the zigzag part. If you push down on your hair, you can see it. So this is what a smaller zigzag part would look like. So, and if your roots are really small, then this one would probably work out pretty good for you. So just depending on like where your roots end, I would say do this zigzag. So I wanna like keep this down so you can see. So if your roots are like only a half inch, this would be perfect. Like this would be more than enough to camouflage your roots. If your roots are a little bit farther here, then when you do the zigzag, you just draw a little bit farther and then a little bit farther back and a little bit farther. Like you just draw your lines a little bit longer. And if your roots are like all the way down here, then literally go all the way there and draw all the way there. And just kind of like, you can make it small, you know, back and forth. Just take two points on the side of your head and just go left, right, left, right, left, right, you know, to make like whatever is like whatever zigzag you want to make. So this one's a shorter one. I'll show you the longer run really quick. So go back, part your hair normal again. You can do this same exact part, by the way, if you have your hair parted in the middle, however you part your hair, like it's all good. Just do the same exact concept. And now I want to do a zigzag part if my roots are grown out to about here. And make sure it's like symmetrical. So if I'm this far away from this part, make sure I'm this far away from this part, you know? So then you start about here, go forward all the way my fingers, go backward there. So I'm just doing like a really long zigzag at this point. 
you want to be pushing kind of hard on your head it might hurt a little bit but it's worth it beauty is pain and now separate find the middle part find the tunnel <laughs> find the tunnel of craziness <laughs> okay and now comb all of your hair down so you don't look like a crazy person so hold this part and comb it hold this part and comb that Okay, so once again, I don't have any line in my part. It totally diffuses the line. And just imagine if I had actual roots, like this part, which would normally be my dark root, starting from about right here, this would all be blonde or light colored because I've like over directed it now. I've over directed it to the other side so that's the concept. When you over direct the hair, you're gonna bring that dimension that was down here, you're gonna bring it now up over this piece. So yeah, so this is what it looks like without me, without me pushing it down to show you, but see, I don't have any part. So I know it was easier to see the zigzag on the smaller one, but if you can tell that the zigzag is bigger, that's like my whole point. I know that on my hair, I don't have roots and it's all dark. So just keep remembering that if you have roots and you have lighter hair, like if you have a dark root and lighter ends, doing a zigzag part like this is literally going to save your root situation for the meantime to help you get by, you know, <laughs> to help you get by at least until, you know, the salon opens again. And yeah, so now from here, if you wanna um, not wear it down to where the zigzag can get messed up or whatever. So this is where you would just kind of braid it now, so. I would suggest taking the top part of each side, just the front, you know, not too far in the back. And this way you can leave this in for days and you don't have to worry about it. Quarantine hair, you know, <laughs> that's the whole point. Quarantine hair. We don't have to constantly worry about doing it. We're just home hanging out. I'm just doing a regular three strand braid. Any type of braid would work, obviously, you know? I'm not like attaching it to the head. And I also want to keep this braid nice and tight so that no matter what you do with your hair, whether you wear it down or up or whatever, you don't have to really mess with it. You can just keep it the same. If you start pancaking it out too much, it's not gonna last as long. Keeping it like braided like this kind of acts as like a cool accent braid to whatever style you're wearing so whether you're wearing your hair down it's just like it adds to it you know what i mean it adds to the style whether your hair whether you wear your hair on a braid and you braid it or whether you wear it like back you know it'll just add to the style so and now i'm just gonna do the same thing on this side this will just help keep that zigzag part um like just it'll help keep it like secure for however many days you're, we're dealing with this quarantine, you know? Okay, so yeah, so either wear your hair down. All right, so I wanna show you guys one last style and this is an option that you can wear your hair up or down, like however you wanna wear it. I'm gonna bring all of my hair back and I just wanna take hair from one side of my head and hair from the other side of my head, bringing like a little bit of a point back to the back. Like you don't wanna go straight back like a mohawk. You wanna go kind of like on an angle. And just take only the front part by your hairline. Maybe like a half inch back. Depending on um, how much hair you have, like I have a lot of hair, so a half inch of hair is enough to really work with. But if you don't have as much hair, 
just take a little bit more hair, you know. Let's do a three strand braid. Try not to make it too tight because you want to pancake it out a little bit, you know. This is where you want to pancake out now. put this clip here to help it so that it doesn't start pulling on the braid as I'm putting this hair tie. So yeah, now you have a nice pancaked braid right out in the front of your head. No French braiding skills necessary for this. Just a little bit of maneuvering the hair to pancake it. Pop this one forward so it's not getting messed up. And I'm just going to do a really high pony now. I can't just straight up do a scrunchie either. I have so much hair that it would just drop right out. If I go up this high at least. I can do a scrunchie if it's lower, you know. <laughs> now, just add the braid to the ponytail and if you want to hide all of these roots you literally just do the exact same thing that you did here but do it on here and here so that way you'll have three braids we bringing up three braids but right now i just did the one to show you guys but like i said if you have roots here too do three of them and this is another thing you can wear for days you know so put your hair make sure it's flat up against the middle and I would just bobby pin it to make sure that when you put the scrunchie in, it doesn't, you know, mess up and go sideways or something. Um, and it doesn't matter if this bobby pin is showing because we're putting the scrunchie right over it. So I'm just putting it right on the top. Right on the top. Doesn't matter. We're covering it. Take your scrunchie. And spray all these little crazy hairs. And I always pop up the top. And this is what that would look like. Oh, this would completely camouflage your roots. Like, just imagine, you know? And especially if you had one here and one here, it would just be like a pretty petaled, pretty petaled ponytail. <laughs> a triple P. Okay, so that was my video on all of the quarantine hairstyles that I think you guys can do at home to really help with any overgrown roots. And I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope you got something out of it. And hopefully all of this craziness, you know, will be over soon and we can get back to normal. But in the meantime, don't worry about your hair, you know, just do what you can, get by, and we will make you pretty again soon. <laughs> yeah, so thank you so much for watching. Definitely leave me a comment below telling me which hairstyle was your favorite and which one you definitely want to try. And subscribe to my channel, especially if you want to see future videos. And also hit the bell for post notifications so that you're notified the next time I upload. Follow me on Instagram, it's at Maxine Glynn. Like this video if you like this idea, and thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. So give me, so give me your all. I'll take it, I'll take it to Mars. Oh, I'll stick like glue inside your mind. Just watch me pray.